Yeah, I'll always be a metalhead. They, nothing can take that away from me. Right. I mean, not jail, not people, not religion, not anything. I'll always be a metalhead. 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 You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome back, Metalheads, to another exciting episode of the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Today, we will be talking about the Dutch black and death metal band, God Dethroned, with their 12th studio album, The Judas Paradox. While this band certainly has slight black metal vibes, I've always seen them as more of a melodic death metal band. Their guitar riffs have always been calm and groovy. My first introduction to this band was way back when I was in high school. I forgot how. But the first two songs I heard were the album title track for Lair of the White Worm and Typhoid Mary from the Toxic Touch album. Going back to that Lair of the White Worm album, I fucking love that song, The Last Zip of Spit. That song fucks hard. The first God Dethroned CD I ever bought was Ravenous. Of course, the opening track, The Poison Apple, followed by Swallow the Spikes, are both beyond killer. Before I get into the Judas Paradox, let's address the previous record, Illuminati, released back in March of 2020. Four years later, and I still simp over that album. Especially because the first six songs, but Book of Lies and Gabriel, have continued to hold a special place in my heart. Two years ago, God Dethrone announced that they had switched record labels. They had spent the majority of their career with Metal Blade Records, but decided to sign with Rising Phoenix Music for the next full length. This announcement also came with a new single titled Asmodeus. I was in shock that after all these years of kicking ass and taking names, they had suddenly released a mediocre track. I of course listened to the song a handful of times before I made my final assessment of it. By the time I was ready to share my thoughts, I couldn't remember what I had just heard. It was unfortunately that forgettable. Fast forward to about two months ago when they finally released their new song titled Rat Kingdom. This music video also included another important message from the band saying that their new album would be coming in early September. This time around, I became very excited because the new song seemed to be a league superior to the previous single they dropped two years ago. In fact, it had a memorable chorus, with Henry Sattler's vocals sounding extra raspy this time around. It was like he was trying to really emphasize the black metal sound in this new material. Not that appearance truly has anything to do with their music, but it was also my first time seeing the band members wearing corpse paint. The second single released happens to be both the album title track and the first song on the album. The fact that Rat Kingdom is the second song, it makes me think that these songs were released back afterwards. But hey, since we're on the first track, I gotta mention the use of choir in the mix. It's a fantastic addition that sounds completely new. The Hanged Man is a song that kicks some serious ass with its deicide vibes. The layered vocals make it sound extra demonic, and it even reminds me of the song Conquered by Sodom. There's also an old school sounding guitar solo on this one. It's one of the shorter songs, but it's definitely a standout. Moving on, we have an interlude track labeled as Black Heart, which is only 51 seconds long. It's a dissonant choir practicing their vows with church bells ringing, but it leads straight into the song that I mentioned earlier called Asmodeus. This time, I really paid attention to the song so I could absorb every note being played. I wanted to really study this one to see if my opinion on the song would change. The results? When I compared the album version of the track to the music video, there weren't any changes made in the sound mixing. It still sounded like one of the only stale tracks this band has ever made. It felt soulless compared to every banger this band has produced in the last 27 years. I guess a dud was bound to happen sooner or later. Although, it did sound better than I remembered. Maybe because this time I had a clear head. Cashmere Princess is another song where I remember the riff. As monotonous as it was, I was slightly reminded of one of their earlier works. Not saying that Dave Meester had recycled any riffs, but I did get the rusty nails feeling, albeit not as heavy. The next track really picks up the pace again to the God Dethroned We All Wanted. Hubris Anorexia begins with three long screams that are layered in succession. Hailing Death is another banger that will make you shout, Hailing Death, every time they say it throughout the song's first minute. I'm so glad they didn't make this whole song repetitious given the length. I would have gotten bored rather quickly. 
Of course, this song has another gorgeous guitar riff at the halfway point of the track. Too bad it doesn't last that long. It does, however, make a very brief return towards the end of the song, which fits as a neat little outro. But we still have two more songs to go. Broken Bloodlines wastes absolutely no time going fucking hard and fast the first second. The speed of the guitar chugs are aggressively heavy and will make any Taylor Swift fan's head explode. And finally, we come to the last song on the album, War Machine. When I saw the song title, I automatically assumed it was a Black Sabbath cover, but then I thought, wait a minute, Six Feet Under already did a cover of that. As I listened to the song, I figured out right away that it was an original song by God Dethroned that simply had the name that had been used before. The song is okay, but not their best work. I feel like Hailing Death should have been the last song because it had that fade out at the end. I feel like that would have worked a lot better. So what's the verdict? Before I go any further, I should probably mention that Joran did a great job on bass, and so did Frank on the drums. But as much as I have always loved this band, and everything they've ever done, I have to be honest and say that it's not really a favorite of mine. A part of me could just be stuck on the classic albums like The Grand Grimoire, Into the Lungs of Hell, or Bloody Blasphemy, but I'm not gonna lie. Most of this record seems to have a lot of filler tracks. They might be heavy, but they lack the grooviness that God Throne seems to be most known for, despite them not even being fully considered as a melodic death metal band. God Throne has never had a bad album, and the Judas Paradox isn't their first. However, I will say that it's definitely lesser. It's not a disappointment by any means. It's a good album, but not overly great. Having said that, I'm going to rate the Judas Paradox a 7.5 out of 10. Unfortunately, I don't think God Dethroned will ever tour the United States. They were going to do a one-off show in Illinois for a metal threat festival, but that event was postponed until October of 2025. The worst part is that they were dropped for next year's lineup. So if I get my passport soon, I'll fly over the Atlantic Ocean for 15 hours to see them. Hopefully I can do that for next summer's Obscene Extreme or Vacan. Who knows? If you want to show your support for God Dethroned, be sure to buy their merch from their official website. I know I'll be buying their Bloody Blasphemy t-shirt with my next paycheck. You can also listen to their music on all streaming platforms. If you like this review, feel free to share it. Give us a like, leave a comment, and smash that subscribe button. Until next time, keep it fucking metal.